Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, you know, rounding out August already. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Although, you know, rest assured, the the uh, hurricane, that was like a drop. The, the, the uh, you know, I almost feel like whatever is hysterical in the newspaper, news just, you can just well, assume they do it it's weather. going Have to be. Have you ever noticed that? Like, whenever there's going to be anything... It's like, oh my God, it's going to snow. Everybody should stock up on food and hunker down. And I'm like, hunker down for snow. This uh, hunker down for the hurricane. And I'm like, well, so I will say this because of hmm. um, the sort of active censoring that's happening mm. and the fact checking uh, that only seems to go in, in one direction, uh, it does seem like the news on those kinds of things is becoming a little more accurate. So by way of example, yes, they were hysterical and they were like, ah, oh, this hurricane or whatever. But then I did notice they did downgrade like hurricane Henry to uh, like tropical, tropical depression yeah. Henry. And I'm like, doesn't quite have the same terrifying ring right. to it, right? But I was like, oh, okay, I bet you they're doing that because it isn't a hurricane anymore yeah. and maybe, you know, But I, I mean, I, we got home, we were out at an event on Saturday night, right? And I was like, oh, no, Dan, the hurricane's coming tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm in the camper, like, closing up the oh, end wow. bunk. Dan's <laughs> getting up patio furniture covers for the umbrellas. And y'all are like, Cause, oh, because the hurricane. Oh, no. I, I was just laughing the next day. I'm like... I don't know why I listen to anything. No, I just, uh, I will say this though. When I moved to New Hampshire, what, 13, 14 years ago, mm -hmm. I um, I already sensed that the weather was pretty hysterical. It you is. Know, and it's, it's, it's a way to manipulate people and it's, you know, that it's whole just fear funny. factor it and all of that. But I was, uh, I used to commute from the Upper Valley to Manchester to the Writers Project and there was a snowstorm and it was snowing quite heavily already in the, the uh, and it was like my first New Hampshire snowstorm. And the lady I was working with was kind of like, you should probably like start driving home. And I was like, nah, it's not gonna be that bad. And then I was like, I learned a lesson, which was <laughs> actually when they tell you there's a nor'easter in, the, in New Hampshire, it's, it, they're usually pretty accurate and it doesn't hurt to just drive yeah, to just where go. you need to be just and, get off and the road. stay safe. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, you know, so So there's lots going on. Yes. Um, which subject should we tackle first? Let's do Let's a little, little right to know stuff yeah. so that we get it out of the way because right. we didn't get to it last week. Yes. So uh, we had a we have a lot of right to know stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one primary thing that I would like to work on is to make sure this weird exception in the right to know law, which is that body cam footage, which the police use. And for folks back home, basically, so we have uh, we've seen that there are much more police departments that are starting to use body cams. I mm -hmm. believe this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's both a good thing in terms of government transparency, but statistically, it actually really does p protect police officers yes. as well, right? Yes. So basically, you have this independent record. People are recording. I would like it to be, you know, that an officer has his body cam on, but if you happen to be in a situation, you should also be filming with your mm. cell phone. And if there are people around who see a police situation, you actually, as just citizen Joe Schmo, should stop and just record the interaction as well, right? So now we have lots of different records. And I think if culturally, we in the Granite State start to do that, you'll actually see a remarkable shift, right? Mm -hmm. Because what a camera does is it puts everyone on good behavior. Like Carla doesn't swear on this show, but she swears every other moment <laughs> of the I'm day. But I'm like a truck driver <laughs> when I'm off camera. <laughs> so um, so we know, you know, that, that um, the body cam footage can, can help keep everyone honest and a little more decent. But now this weird thing happened and and uh, from, I don't even know if it's the, the money from COVID or whatever, just all these slush funds that are yeah, just being all kicked these different grants places. for all sorts of things. Uh, but uh, more than, a, I, I believe a million dollars was just assigned to go to police body cams. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to different towns, if know. that's on a, on a trooper level or what exactly mm -hmm. that is, but I did read today. So the problem we currently have is that the body cam footage, when a police officer's camera switches on, uh, is now exempt from our right to know laws. Right. So basically, you know, the right to know law- the Including the person being videoed. Yes. So that's really, to me, where it's very, 
So, onerous. So by way of example, I was in a situation, I was talking to an officer and I uh, swore like a sailor and, uh, and that must have triggered the camera to switch on. And so he said, oh, I need to advise you. I'm audio, uh, I'm audio and video recording you. And I was like, yes, you are. And then we talked about my case. And I thought that would be cute footage to use for something. It was a, it was a, you know, entirely polite conversation yep, yep. and we were just really talking. And I thought, oh, this would be cool to show how you can interact with police where you still, you know, assert your rights, but no one's being difficult the, right. or, you know, or particularly difficult, I suppose. And, um, and so uh, I thought, oh, I'll just 91A this footage. And when I did, they wrote back and they're like, no, that's exempt. And I was like, it is? That doesn't seem right. Um, and then the city attorney sent me the language and whatever. Fast forward a little bit. A sitting alderman in the right. city. Um, was uh, accused of something. And the, 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 the details of, the, of the what happened is isn't irrelevant. isn't even that important, right? right. But... but um, He's supposedly Joe Kelly Lavasser, right? So he was in an altercation with a with a parking at alleged alter, altercation with a parking attendant. So when they did the interview with the, with parking. the witness, with the with someone who was involved in it, they used body cam footage. And then when he asked to get the witness statement, they told him, "Oh no, that's exempt from right to know." Right. So the police department now, if that had been a written. Statement, statement of, he could have gotten it. Yeah, and if they'd actually gone up to, because then Chief Ollenberg said, well, you know, sometimes we just use the lobby to do police work because, gee, it's way too hard to walk up three flights of stairs to go to the actual office where there's a camera where we usually do witness interviews. So they're routinely starting to use the body cams. Yes. While also knowing that they are exempt from disclosure and so um i'm going to be working with with legislators to see if we can fix that needs that. to get cleaned up a bit so at a minimum i think you know people say but you know there's a privacy right and and i'm like okay but which maybe but, when... but you know i i do sort of because that's the same argument we hear with the police encryptions, right? Right, that there's so privacy we, and then we can't, you know, we're so jeopardizing we, the community. But meanwhile... We always had it. It was always, the police scanners were always available for anyone to listen to. And part of that is just checks well, and balances. And so that you know what's going on. I mean, look at the situation with this guy with the machete in Bedford. <laughs> if that wasn't, like, you couldn't have made that story up. But there was, he left that hotel... So, I mean, maybe they were in Bedford, so maybe it did get out on the scanners. I don't know. But I'm like, so I live... Oh, I'm pretty sure they're all But I'm all very them. close to that right. to Bedford. So some man who just literally slashed murdered up and two murdered two people, people, two people at a hotel with a machete. With a machete <laughs> is out running around. And you shouldn't be able to know it, like, if they were in your neighborhood on uh, doing a manhunt? That's well, and the thing crazy. is also, it, it's indicative of a deeper problem. And what it is indicative of is the police don't trust the citizenry. They claim they're, you know, protecting and serving. But I'm not sure that's how they're being trained or that's the relationship they actually mm. think they're in with us, right? Because what you really want is... You know, most people are good guys. Mm -hmm. And so you want as many people as possible to be like, we're all good guys and we're in this together. No one wants a lunatic with a machete running around chopping people up, right? So you actually want people to be able to help you and to know what the situation is. So um, I think we have a we, we have a real problem and, and hopefully we can address this, but to go to the privacy issue, you know, if, if you're in public, I mean, even if it's not your finest moment, and of course, no one here thinks we should be judging people by their worst moment, right? But I think that the, the, the public you're, service you're in or the, the public. Yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're exactly. This is not, we're not talking about an incident, incidents where there is a police officer in my home. Oh. And you would like to see the footage of what happened between that police officer and me in my home, Right. right? I should be able to see the footage of the interaction between yes. the police officer and me in my home. But in this instance, I wouldn't be. No, and so I think that we need to very carefully look at that language. Quite frankly, I think we should look at the whole RSA 91. 91A. It's junk. 
Well, like, frankly, because everyone has just sausaged it. You know how they say how how they make the sausage. Well, that's what happens. And then we end up with a bunch of badly... It's bad because the New Hampshire Constitution is actually fantastic on government accountability and transparency. It basically says two things. It says that the agents of the government can only do what you as a private citizen are authorized to do. Now, we violate that Mm -hmm. on a daily basis, including something like qualified immunity, which basically says that, oh, well, you know, if you and I break the law, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But But if a public official breaks the law, well, they have qualified immunity because... They're a public Aww, official. How are they supposed to know that that was the law? Why don't we get them a get, you know, get out of jail free card? Uh, so that's entirely not in balance right, because right. Uh, we are literally, shockingly, holding our public officials to a lower standard than what you and I are held to. So that's some of the action on 91A. And for folks back home who are interested in this issue, we have a Right to Know New Hampshire uh, website. You can find information there where you can download to do your own uh, requests. Uh, We've had people like Lori Ortolano from Nashua on the show before. I was in a meeting with her over the weekend. She has spent close to $200,000 defending these right to know requests, in which, just to remind folks from back home, she discovered that the mayor of Nashua has a tax abatement on his property that other people do not have. And after that came to light, Nashua police officers showed up at her house on a Saturday afternoon and gave her a verbal warning to stop filing right to know requests. So I think, you know, for for citizens brigades and for people who are like, oh, you know, we need to remember this is a great tool. And actually another idea I had was uh, maybe we should make it and, and Certainly, you know, I'm of the, the, the mindset that uh, less laws are better. So mm-hmm. I don't want to be like, there ought to be a law. But um, I would love to see it culturally become that any municipality, if they get a 91A request, they post the request and they post the responses. So we're Fair enough, because it is pu- supposed to be for the public good. Right, and so that would actually create a culture where maybe we're making more information well, public, and so less people would have to file a request, spend so much money, and it actually costs the city a lot as well, right? They are hiring these lawyers who are charging you know, $400 mm-hmm. an hour, and it's becoming ridiculously expensive because you're paying someone to redact you know, the entire Lori's list, for example, <laughs> uh, which is also... Yeah, uh, I saw something just in the last 24, 48 hours about... Um, yeah, I think it was in the Sunday paper, maybe? It, and um, so I think it's several things are happening. So um, because of the way they wrote the law that I didn't like, but fine, it is what it is, um, they, they're providing police officers with an opportunity to remove mm-hmm. their name from the list before the list is made public, which is supposed to happen October-ish, yes. right? Um, so fine. I mean, they claim that there's no consistent process to get on the list. That is a lie. I have at my desk at home a 20-page process that was brought out by the AG's office that I don't know if it was memory hold or what happened to it, but there was a process that you, as the police chief, had to follow yep. to put these people on the list. Be that as it may, whatever version they're telling us at the moment. So, um, so I think it's eight or nine officers have asked to be removed from the list. They're also trying to cull the list so that um, I'm pretty sure once the list becomes public in October, there's not going to be one sitting or very few sitting police officers left on it. Right. And I think that uh, they've basically wasted the last four years to make that possible so that there won't be this 
slew of court cases coming in where people are saying, well... I was convicted using the know, testimony of this, this officer that lied, shouldn't have or been who on... falsified, yeah. you know, the police report like they did in my case and all of that stuff. So exciting things coming up. I know that September, mid-September is uh, the cutoff date for new bills to be yep, introduced. Yep, There's, it's a very short window in the second year. Yeah, um, so, so, you know, I'm a hot to trot on getting all of that stuff in there to protect your rights because the more we know about government, the more we can hold them accountable or reform the things that need to be reformed because, you know, we can't just keep going in this direction where people just keep doing wrong and wrong and wrong and we never fix the problems. Speaking of problems. Yes. <laughs> so yesterday, Monday the 23rd of August, um, the city clerk's office received a letter from um, the Attorney General, Depart uh, Department of Justice, um, rejecting the language that the alderman pr wanted to put on the November ballot establishing uh, taxing authority for the school district. So this is the charter commission that we've talked about in the past. And for folks back home, you'll remember that last year there was a question on the city ballot saying, hey, should we allow should, this to... Should we elect... Well, it... it it's confusing because there, I even lost track of what happened. <laughs> so it goes back to like 2019. Alderman, oh, I don't even know if he was alderman then. He might have been an alderman. He was definitely a state rep. I think he's a school board member now, Pat Long. He put in a piece of rushed last minute legislation when the Democrats still had control. Entirely to, not following any of the timeline. Right. It was just really bizarre and um, it made it through because it was like one of those <laughs> things that like nobody knew what the hell you were talking about. Well, and also the courts were like, yeah, no one followed the rules, but, right. uh, but it's but, already on the ballot. So we'll just let it but slide even before, again. Even before it ever got to the ballot, the law, and that's what people forget. There was a law passed and RSA... <laughs> Let's see, RSA, I can't even find it, 49B15, which already exists. It, 49B covers the process to amend city charters and whatnot. Well, this was a new subdivision, right? We added another section that specifically deals with Manchester School District Charter Commission. And the key line in this, I think, is if the ballot question is approved, the ballot question was, shall we establish a school charter commission to um, develop a process to amend or change or whatever the school charter? And keep in mind, there is no school charter. If the ballot question is approved, then the Manchester School District Charter shall be revised, amended, or replaced in accordance with the local procedure approved by the school district voters and effective on the date uh, the ballot question is approved. So basically the law says, if the people in Manchester want to say, yes, we would like to elect this school charter commission to develop the procedure to revise, amend, or replace the school charter, once it's approved, that's the process. Okay. So there's some back and forth. What the AG's office said is, the only entity that can send the language to the ballot at this point would be the school committee. Okay. Because we elected a school charter. Basically, I think this mucked up the system because we took the city charter and now I believe the AG's office is saying anything pertaining to the schools in the city charter now falls under the purview of the school committee and the school charter committee. Okay. Not the regular charter committee or the alderman. So they rejected the language. Mm -hmm. They said, no, you don't have the, you're, you can't submit this, um, but the school district would have to do it. So this, so, I mean, it's a mess. It and is a big mess and we keep letting the same people make it worse. I mean, we keep saying, well, okay, well then we should put language on to give them taxing authority. Okay, we can't even get, this was the worst piece of legislation I had seen in a long time. It created a filing period that was impossible for the city clerk to, to operate under. Right. So then the city clerk did things that made it impossible for a, a candidate to get on the ballot. And it's like been one problem after another. And I'm thinking, so naturally we would want to give those people 
more authority and the ability to send you a property tax bill. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. Insane. Uh, these also being the same people who, who, you know, there was an audit of Manchester schools because there has been uh, declining enrollment mm. for a really, really long time. There was a recommendation in this report to close three schools. Yep. And we only close one. And we... One grade school. Right. But then the word on the street was suddenly like, oh, you know, let's close three or four, I think was even suggested at some stage schools. And then... Build a giant high school. Dot, dot, dot. Build a mega school. And it's like, no, well, what part and, of the I mean, report says and, that? And how about this? <laughs> this is just like where you, you say there is obviously a break in the processes. So during COVID... The taxpayers paid for, and the schools, the individual schools, which are managed by the school district, which takes direction from the school committee, whether you like it or not, which is headed up by the mayor, handed out 16,000 Chromebooks because kids needed to be able to work remotely. Okay, 16, 16, they said, handed out 16,000, no, maybe it's 13,000, 1,600 of them just never came back and they don't even know where they are. It, uh, there were like two or three schools that I don't even think kept a list of who was getting the Chromebooks. Here you go, Chromebook, Chromebook, have a Chromebook, have a Chromebook. And I'm like, that's insane. But uh, these are the people who would like to be able to send you a property tax bill in addition to the property tax bill that the alderman sent you. And, you know, uh, you know, sometimes I think, <laughs> when, when I, you know, people will be like, why are you ragging so hard on the schools or the education it's system? It's that or bad. Anything? It's bad. It's bad. And it's like, again, it's like bad and everyone complains and talks about it, but no one's willing to do the hard work to change it. And I think this school choice thing that we've it's start, it's gotten like open, through uh, it's opening is going it up. to eke out real change that'll introduce real competition yes. and it'll and improve our public schools competition never ruins things competition always brings everybody up yep uh, uh, unless you totally suck in which case then, you, you shouldn't be able right. to tax me <laughs> so that you can suck and not do your job properly i'm sorry that's just the reality right. of 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 life right and I want the schools to be good. I don't want the literacy rate to be seventeen percent. And that and that be okay, right? You know, I mean, where people are starting to well, what, talk in pictures what, again. We what, are devolving, folks. What we got to do what better. What ideal are we teaching children when we hand them a laptop and then? can't even tell you well, like, what we're teaching we're not them holding is, them is responsible that everyone uh, wants ubi and that everyone can just sit at home and play video games and somehow magically the magic fairies are just going to provide and at some stage for those of us who get the tax bill we're starting to go well i'm a little tired of it maybe not or if you want me to provide we're gonna do it on my terms not on Pat Long's, let's just uh, go create a taxing authority uh, that can write <laughs> bills for crazy. people who didn't work an entire year, who called themselves essential and called us and you non-essential. So get along. I'm like, if I'm non-essential, I don't want to pay you my You know what taxes. I do? In the, like, sitting back and thinking about that whole this, the Pat Long's bill and the law and the school charter commission and the mess it was. And then the school charter commission made recommendations. And those are not the recommendations that the alderman sent to the AG's office anyways. But what I don't understand is this year, 2021, was the normal year <laughs> that we elect a charter commission. We elect a charter commission every 10 years. Every 10 years. This year, we would we're elect a charter commission. Why was it so urgent to have a special charter commission that was all mucked up? It's when what? they could have. I mean, the, the charter commission that gets I elected. I think they no. wanted it in before this report that came out, and then the, the, something the, the lining make up sense. of the things. Didn't there, quite there's work ulterior out the way motives they behind the scenes. There is no way that. It, I mean, if if you said to me, you know, we should try whatever. If somebody said to me, Tammy, I'd like to see the city charter change to say X. I would, my knee jerk would be, well, you could do a couple things. You could get the alderman to do it. You could wait until the charter commission, or you could do a petition drive and do like I did with the tax gap and get, you know, 
thousands and thousands and thousands of signatures of people who said this is what they'd like to vote Thank on. you, Tammy. So you, there's ways to do it. Why create a complicated, weird offset way? And now, as a result, it has mucked up that whole process. And guess what? Only in the city of Manchester, because the law, you should never write laws specific to one municipality. Right. So on the good news side of things, uh, uh, community West, action. Yes. Yep. Community action is a great thing. I don't know why I recently read somebody complaining about We Heart West. I was like, so this is a group that spends their time cleaning up the west side of Manchester. Right. I routinely pick Volunteers. up your trash for you. Right. You're welcome. Why would anybody complain about that? Why would because anybody say there's jerks. an ulterior motive? Yes, there is a motive. Yeah, Those I want to not live side. in a trashy <laughs> right. neighborhood. And so, I would appreciate it if you're watching this, step outside your home. Yep. And if there's, I don't know, Dunkin' Donuts and jump just and litter and whatever, pick it up. If we all do a little bit, so, our city could look a lot better. We Heart West is uh, started the first West Manchester day. Um, this reminds me in a lot of ways of the different events that would happen up in the North End revolving around Stark Park. Um, you know, and Stark Park has a lot of great things going on. And then Dan and I noticed at the gazebo over in Dairyfield that there was music playing the other night. And I was like, where's our West Side gazebo? You know, like, right. this is where this yeah, comes from, trying. right? So West Manchester Day will be on, dun, 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 the Saturday fourth, the 4th right? of September. Yep. So that's Labor Day weekend. Uh, most of it takes place at Rock Rimmon Park. But I do know that Nick Pigeon, who's a candidate for school committee, by the way, for Ward 10, um, is hosting a cornhole tournament raising funds for the Parkside Garden, which is next to Gosler School. Um, and I do believe that that part takes place near the Gosler School because it's to benefit over there. But there's all sorts of things. There's a, a you know, a yard games and um, they're having a, a bear hunt. <laughs> a bear hunt with, for the kids through Rock Rimmon, uh, tug of war, ice cream trucks, all sorts of stuff. Never mind the stuff that's on on premises up there. People might not realize the amount of amenities that are up at Rock Rimmon. So that is, um, I believe it starts 11. Don't quote me on that. 11 o'clock on Saturday the 4th. You can get more information at westmanchesterday.com. Yep. Um, it's tons of fun. Bring your friends, bring your family, get out of the house. See what's going on in yeah, West Manchester, and, you know, and let's make West Manchester, you know, and I a mean, destination. Rock Ribbon too. Park is, I mean, that area, it's really beautiful. It's yep. this huge acre. You can climb, yep. you can hike up there. It's it's really nice. So, if we can get the trash cleaned up, and I don't know. Yeah, they're doing a cleanup that day at five o'clock. I know that. Five o'clock, Rock Ribbon Park cleanup with We Heart West. Um, so it's a great event. If you have any information uh, that you need more information on that, or if you have any questions, if you hate the right to know laws, if you love the right to know laws, if you think we should not talk about right to know laws, <laughs> um, you can email us. It's manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, we do upload our videos weekly to YouTube and Carla does a wonderful job getting them on Odyssey, which is a sensor proof platform, um, which I'm clueless about. I know what it's, it is, but I just don't know. It. It's an to alternative YouTube to YouTube, for people and you won't who are get shut concerned down. that Big Brother is just trying to yeah. shut down anyone who can still think. So that's what we got. Um, enjoy this week. It's going to be sticky again. The rain should hold off a bit. Uh, Check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, available on Amazon and on my website. And there is a book TV interview on my website, carlagarrick.com, that you can go listen to and find out more about the book and the activism I've done over awesome. the years. That's all we got for this week. We'll be back next week. Take Have care. a good one. Bye.